Hello, I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Well, the year is 1540, and Francisco Vázquez de Coronado and his expedition have reached New Mexico. Um, it is a quasi-business, military, and religious um, exploration, and um, it doesn't go well. Um, we know that uh, Fray Marcos de Nisa had reported in 1539 that there was gold up here in New Mexico. Um, so when the, the Spanish soldiers got here, they were not very happy. Um, they were actually quite angry. And interestingly enough, Fray Marcos de Nisa came on the expedition. This begs the question, uh, why did he say what he did? Was he a liar, a scoundrel? Uh, was he trying to trick people? Or did he believe he saw gold? Um, we don't know. But he came on the expedition and the soldiers wanted to kill him. Um, nevertheless, um, they were here and they were determined to make their journey worthwhile. Um, we have to remember... Um, this was a business venture, and it was also quite awesome. I mean, we have to imagine uh, these Spanish uh, conquistadores wearing armor, riding horses, with hundreds of Native American allies with them, Mexican Indian warriors. Um, there were women on the expedition and Africans as well. The Pueblos uh, likely were um, fascinated uh, maybe in shock a little to see uh, people and animals they'd never seen before. Um, nonetheless, um, this was not a successful uh, venture for Coronado and the people who had come from the south. So um, ultimately what they start to do is they start to push their weight around and they want to find mineral wealth that really, um, if it doesn't exist, um, it isn't known to the Pueblo people. So what happens is right up around uh, the middle Rio Grande Valley, um, an Indian guide takes the Spaniards on a journey to uh, see if they could find what they're looking for. Um, his name was Bigotes, a Spanish word which means uh, Bigotes facial hair. Um, this was a Native American who probably had that rare situation of having hair on his face. And so the Spaniards called him Bigotes. And they go on another adventure um, northeast of New Mexico through the plains um, and into what's now Kansas. That's how far they go. Um, it's an ocean of grass and rolling hills. Um, in the records, they say that um, it was difficult to tell which direction was which, especially when the sun was overhead. And ultimately, they um, plant wooden crosses to guide themselves, like you see in the movies where people drop popcorn or something when they're going into the jungles or something so they could find their way back. Well, that's what the Spaniards do. And right around uh, what's uh, present-day Kansas, um, they had had enough. They did not find cities of gold in that direction. And so um, they kill poor Bigotes and he's dead. And that's the end of him. Um, the Spaniards make their way back uh, to what's now the Rio Grande Valley. And um, Coronado's, um, as you can imagine, um, he's pretty anxious. I mean, you have to remember, as I've said before, these were quasi-capitalists. They weren't just... Uh, soldiers they were but they were more than that uh, it, it's not like the crown just uh, uh, bestowed money on them and said here go do what you want find whatever you can and come back um, Coronado was a wealthy man who invested a lot of money and uh, it was a agreement between um, Coronado and the crown much like what uh, Cristobal Colon Christopher Columbus had and so things were not going well um, he dispatches uh, a soldier, um, Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, to go west to see if maybe there's something out there. And uh, uh, Garcia and his soldiers go as far as uh, the Grand Canyon. In fact, they're the first Europeans 
to see the Grand Canyon and they they were in awe of it as you can imagine they they said it was several giraldas deep a giralda is the um uh the Moorish minaret uh, alongside the cathedral in Sevilla um that back then was considered a skyscraper a, a tall tall uh, edifice so um uh, they were quite non. You could say that's when uh, tourism in Arizona started in 1540. Um, but um, no, they don't find any uh, cities of gold. But what they do find is um, a really good idea of what is up in this part of the world, uh, the lay of the land. And what ends up happening is they all end up back in New Mexico, uh, particularly in the uh, community known as Tigue. Tigue uh, was a, a few towns that were situated around what's now um, Bernalillo in uh, North Albuquerque. And this is where this uh, community was. Uh, and so the Spaniards, uh, they try once again to see if there's any gold or silver or anything worth their while. And, and they don't find it. They, they find a well-ordered towns, um, pueblos. Um, the Spanish word uh, for a town is a pueblo. It also means people or population, pueblo. Um, and the Spaniards are quite impressed. Um, the pueblo people have well-ordered uh, communities and towns. Um, uh, they um, have a society uh, that is uh, respectful of the elderly. Um, they have their own religious systems with kivas. Uh, the Spanish Catholics, though, are quite suspicious of those. Uh, they call them estufas, um, ovens, or even sometimes mesquitas, mosques, uh, reminiscent of their grandfathers fighting the Moorish Wars in Spain. Um, and they find them uh, cultivating uh, beans and squash and corn. Uh, they have agriculture, but the Pueblos at this point really don't have anything to offer these uh, high-minded uh, businessmen, soldiers. And so they finally leave uh, two years later, 1542, but not before killing and butchering uh, some of the Pueblo people in the Tigua area by burning them alive. And um, this is a catastrophe, as you can imagine, um, it leaves a very bad taste in the mouths of the Pueblo people when it comes to Spanish people. Um, Coronado and his expedition leave. They head south. Um, but they do leave uh, three priests. Three priests, priests are, remain. They remain to uh, try to convert uh, the Pueblo people in the area to Roman Catholicism. And um, once the Spanish soldiers are gone, as you can imagine, uh, those three priests were killed on the spot. They were martyred. Um, and um, that marks the end of Spanish presence in New Mexico at that time, 1542. This was an expedition of exploration, not colonization. There were no settlements established by Spanish people. Um, no Spanish remained to found families or anything like that. Um, in fact, um, it will be about two generations before uh, Spain will take uh, another look at New Mexico and send a colonizing expedition. Um, keep in mind, there will be um, entradas into New Mexico uh, over the next few decades. Uh, these are uh, entrances or expeditions, and some of them legal, some of them illegal. I'll talk about that next time, and then we will start to get into the Oñate expedition of 1598. See you next time. Hasta pronto.